Alright. Any questions y'all got about those? Or am I going to the training program? Any, any questions about the principles? Oh, you started here? Yeah. Oh. We're good. You going? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so now that we understand the basic principles of training, now we go to the variables of training. It's just stuff that we can manipulate. And you can't manipulate the individual, the principle of individualization. You're not gonna change that. But these are stuff we can manipulate. Alright, so we got our volume. Your volume, a lot of people is, is, is get confused on that. What your volume is, is your weight times your reps. Okay? So if you do 100 pounds or 10 reps, your total volume for that set is 1,000 pounds, okay? And we can characterize volume by per set, per lift, per day, per week, per cycle. So you can have a high volume cycle in which you're doing lots of repetitions with moderate weight, okay? We give a low volume cycle in which you're doing higher weight with lower, uh, lower repetitions. Does that make sense? So just kind of we got that's something we can categorize and something we can manipulate. Intensity is your percent of max lift. Okay. So intensity does not mean like how hard you're training, whether you're like you're gonna puke or you feel like you know, you're really just getting after it. When we're talking about intensity of training, we're talking about the percentage of your max lift. Alright, so if we're working at a lower percentage, you know, in that 50 to 70 percent range, <coughs> it's uh, it's gonna be a low percentage um, lift. You start building up like that 90, 95, 97.5, 100% range, those are high intensity lifts. All right? We also have to understand that there's a um, inverse or negative correlation between intensity and volume. In other words, you can't train with high intensity and high volume. How many times can you do your one rep max? One time. You can't do high volume with your one rep max. Okay? And so this kind of shows a bit of a uh, uh, a bit of a correlation between it says it shows that the volume and intensity uh, must be negatively correlated. Um, at the bottom here, this is called Prelopin's chart. Prelopin was a Russian sports scientist or Soviet sports scientist, and what he basically figured out was for the percentage of max, what the optimal reps per sets are or uh, how many reps per set, what the optimal total reps were um, in the total range. So in other words, it says that for the 55 to 65 percent range, <clears throat> reps per set between three to six, total rep range that you could use would be between 18 and 30 for the entire lift, or um, I would be 24. All right, you come with the 90 percent, one to two reps per set, optimal four, total range 10 or under. And what that means, if you look at West Side conjugate method, that is basically their whole meat and potatoes right there, what they take that off of. When they do their max effort lifts, they try to get about four lifts, max effort, 90% or greater, and they try to get you know, two to four sets of one to two reps. Okay, so at the bottom of the chart, nine percent greater. Da, 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 da. When they do their speed stuff, their dynamic effort, they're going to do between fifty-five percent and sixty-five percent. And what do they do for bench press? Eight sets of three. What's eight times three? 24 total reps, optimal. All right, so that makes sense? So when you're categorizing your training and you know how many of you are working with these in, within these specific percentage ranges, use that chart to categorize that kind of stuff, okay? Now, let me say that this is referring to strength work and speed and power development, not necessary bodybuilding, gaining, and muscle, right? That's a different thing. But when you're trying to get stronger, Make sure you're using this chart to categorize your training and plan it out correctly. All right, another training variable, exercise selection. Um, like I said before, are we trying to make it a general preparatory work or a specific stuff? <clears throat> so if you're a powerlifter, squat bench deadlift is your skill specific stuff. 
anything else is general preparation. Okay? If you're a baseball player, playing baseball is your skill specific stuff. Anything else is general uh, preparation. So you have the idea of sports specific training. Um, there's not a whole lot of carryover between, let's say, you know, taking a weighted ball here and doing this stuff and like, oh yeah, I'm training for baseball. <clears throat> it's your skill specific work by doing the actual sport in terms of general preparation for work. Um, otherwise. Exercise selection is also going to take into consideration goals, um, you know, what you're trying to work for, what your weaknesses are. Um, so I know Chad, his weakness is his flexibility. It always is. Until he until he starts game playing around that, he'll never be able to squat bench together correctly. Okay? Um, same with Jim. Until, he, until Jim gets his back stronger, he's not really set up for bench press. So that's going to go into, um, into your exercise selection. All right, duration of the training day, the micro cycle, the meso cycle, and the macro cycle. In other words, how long am I going to train that day? Am I going to train for 30 minutes? Is it a recovery day? Am I going to train for an hour and a half? Um, how long is my micro cycle going to be? Your micro cycle is your smallest breakdown of of a training cycle. For so much people, it's a week. You know, am I gonna have a seven day micro cycle? Or am I gonna repeat my exercises or my workouts back over after four days or five days? How long is my meso cycle gonna be? So think about like this. Here's your macro cycle. Here are your meso cycles. Six days a week, seven days a week, three, four, two, one. All right. Frequency uh, of training is something else you can play with. Tempo. What's the speed of the lift? If you're riding 55 to 60 percent, say you're supposed to be doing it for speed work, you make sure you're doing it for speed work and not throwing a billion bands on there and going, uh, uh. all right, grind it out. You got you to make sure that what is the tempo of the lift. Um, all different phases of the lift. Is it going to slow eccentric? How long am I holding at the bottom? Is it a slower, fast, concentric? How long am I holding at the top? Am I doing isometric stuff? All right, tip over the lift is something else you're going to play with. And finally, recovery. How often and what types of uh, recovery are you going to use? I'll tell you, one of the biggest things I see is other than not training, not programming at all, I guess it kind of goes into that, is that no, people just don't put any type of recovery work in. Okay, and that can be everything from a deload week or to doing specific recovery drills like massage, pull back, yoga. Make, it, there's a book on Russian recovery methods that's that thick and they name about five billion. Um, going outside and walking with the shoes off in the forest, that's what they say is the best. Um, or going to the beach and walking with the shoes off. That's what their best recovery is. Those guys train about 10 to 12 training sessions per week. So they're doing two days and most of the days. Uh, with high intensity stuff. 
but they programmed it in all this recovery methods as well. So you understand it all kind of plays in, in, in the world. If you're going to be training your ass off, you're every game trying to recover. You're not going to be training your ass off, you don't really have to worry too much about it, okay? So a bunch of different training variables that you can kind of manipulate and go on with that. They take the best in town. When it's being referred to it all as an equalizer. So you have you know, strength, max strength, endurance, hypertrophy, flexibility, mobility, recovery, uh, if I were doing different other things. And they each have a scale in which they can be put up. Put, put up. If you put everything at the top of the equalizer, what happens? You broke, you blow the speaker, right? And uh, you don't get no sound, all right? If you come to the bottom and nothing comes up, you don't get any sound. You've got to, you've got to wave stuff, and as one stuff, one thing comes down, another thing uh, comes up. One thing comes up, another thing comes down. So you're training for hypertrophy, every max strength comes down. This is here, endurance is down for um, I don't know what that's supposed to be. But anyways, so on and so forth. Recovery be All right? And so you have different goals. Your hypertrophy comes down. Max strength goes up. Your strength of power and strength is up. Endurance is still down. Hypertrophy is, you know, so on and so forth. Okay? So which is the biggest thing I want you to learn from all of that kind of stuff is that it's more, if your goals are elite, it's more than just coming to the gym and banging the weights out. Yeah, what, that's what it comes down to. You have to commit to it and just come in here and just do your shit. But you also have to think a little bit and kind of take into consideration all these different factors um, when it's time to, time to figure out your training methods. Any questions on that? That's a lot of stuff you should have. No questions? <coughs> 